Hey everyone, Eric from Trigger.dev here. Just wanted to show off um, our new Trigger.dev real-time feature with a little demo that I built using Next.js, Uplifting, Foul AI, and of course Trigger.dev. Um, and what this is going to do, this little app, uh, actually I'll, I'll run it first and we'll see kind of how it works. So I've got this file here, I'm uploading it to upload thing, and then it's going to go and trigger a trigger.dev task. And that task is going to fan out to three subtasks that are going to run uh, foul.ai models. And then we're subscribing to all of this using trigger.dev real time, and we'll sort of see everything happen uh, as, as the background tasks uh, finish. So uh, we can actually see the background task happening here in trigger.dev uh, in, in the trigger.dev dashboard and you can see one of them is finished and the other two are still we're still waiting on um, as you can see here once once those two finish um, in the background this will get updated and basically this is all built on trigger.dev real time which is out now uh, version 3.1.0 in beta um, and uh, we're excited for you guys to, to check it out. But I just want to walk through how this, this works uh, and give you an idea of, of kind of what you can do with the uh, real time. Uh, so let's just quickly, uh, a little diagram here I whipped up to show you uh, what's going on. So we have this Next.js app that I built that we can see here. Oh, look, another one came through. It's <laughs> pretty funny. Um, and basically we're using upload thing to you know, upload a file, uh, which is going to S3, but then we hear back from upload thing when the file is uploaded with some uh, information about the file, like the URL and uh, an ID and all sorts of other stuff. From there, we're gonna trigger a task and trigger.dev. Uh, that task is that handle upload task, um, which does the fan out to three separate run file model tasks, and that will ha happen all in parallel. Uh, and then back in our Next.js app, after we're finished triggering the task, we're going to redirect to that uh, upload page uh, that we're viewing here. Uh, so you can see the URL, it's like upload slash uh, ID and stuff. Yeah, so it will redirect to this and then that page will subscribe in using our real-time feature uh, to trigger.dev to basically uh, anytime anything changes in here, uh, whether that's um, the uh, the stat status of any of the runs, or if uh, some of the metadata is um, uh, updated, or the output you know uh, happens, uh, then we'll hear about it right away, pretty much. Uh, and so I'll, I'll dig into we're going to dig into the code of how that works. Uh, but sort of I want to touch first on sort of how how we built it at a very very high level. Um, because I want to talk about Electric SQL. So we're, we're actually wrapping Electric SQL um, in this release. And what Electric SQL does is it uh, will, uh, allows you to, to listen basically over HTTP for changes in a Postgres database. Uh, and so we're built on Postgres. And so we're, we, it's a really, really nice fit where we're kind of wrapping it. We're adding, you know, the authentication on top of it and sort of the ac access control stuff, right? Um, but uh, at the end of the day, really what, what's happening is when your uh, front end is going to make this request to trigger a dev, really over here, um, we should have like a, you know, electric, uh, electric SQL. Because um, that's just proxying uh, down to... To Electric SQL and sort of pumping uh, that data, data through. So yeah, it's powered by Electric SQL, um, all self-hostable. There's no uh, proprietary system here. So whether you you're using the cloud or you're self-hosting Trigger.dev, this just, just this should just work for you. Um, but yeah, so let's get back to the code now that this is finished. We can sort of come back here. We see they've all all finished, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, let's just see how this is implemented and uh, give you some idea of, of what you can build with it. So we'll start with the triggering side. This is our upload thing router and we are, this code runs whenever an upload completes and we get some information about the file here. Uh, and what we're doing is we're triggering a task, as you can see here, um, the handle upload task. Uh, we're passing the file as the payload, and then we're passing in these t tags, uh, and this is going to be important in a second because um, we're going to basically reuse this file tag for the handle upload task, but also those child run file model tasks. 
And then uh, later on, we'll see in a second, we're going to subscribe to the just this tag. So we can not only subscribe to just a single run, we can do that if we want. But in this case, we're subscribing to like a set of runs and we'll get real time updates whenever anything changes in any of those runs. Um, so we get back a handle here for the, 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 uh, the run that we just triggered. Uh, and then we're passing this uh, public access token uh, back to the client um, and we're going to use that in a second. So this public access token is sort of our authentication, uh, authentication and uh, authorization system built, uh, you know, to allow you to do, um, you know, safely uh, access uh, resources in trigger.dev from your front end. Uh, and this is just a, it's an auto-generated uh, JSON web token that has permissions to um, to subscribe to this this run specifically or any tags that we've passed in here. Um, so you can uh, create your own public access tokens, um, uh, but this is just a handy way of just getting back one that you can use right away. And of course they like expire and you can control that and all that, but uh, for this demo, we'll just pass the public access token that public access token down, that's hard to say. <laughs> um, so on the client side now we've, um, this is uh, what upload thing is giving us to, you know, um, respond to that uh, upload being complete. And it's giving us uh, this file ID uh, and we're gonna redirect basically the user and we're gonna pass the public access token uh, through the search query params. Um, so now we're, this is over on that, uh, you know, slash upload slash ID page. Uh, we're getting the public access token from the search params and we're sort of passing that through to a client uh, component um, with the file ID. Um, so this client component, this is Next.js app router, so you have to think about these things. Um, this client component will sort of, uh, it wraps, um, the, the page in our auth provider, passing that public access token to the access token option. So basically now anything inside of here that does a request to trigger.dev through our hooks or our SDK will use this ac public access token instead of something else. Uh, but yeah, this is a, just the safe way of of accessing resources from your front end and not, you, you know, you never would pass your API key, right? So we need this public access token system. Uh, so getting to the good stuff here, we've uh, we've got this React component that takes the the, the uh, file ID. It's wrapped with our provider, and now we have this hook that's called use handle upload run. Uh, and basically, this just wraps our use real time runs with tags hook, uh, and that is from our React hooks package. Um, and we're passing in that tag uh, that we were that I was showing you before, um, and then we're getting back a list of runs, uh, and you know possibly an error if something goes wrong. Um, uh, but yeah, so we're basically we're going to take those runs and we're sort of uh, create like a nicely uh, a nice uh, return value uh, from this hook uh, that we can then use here in uh, in our React component to display the page. So for example, like if we don't get a run yet, we're going to show like a, you know, uh, a loading thing. Uh, but then once we have the run, we're going to sort of try to, uh, to get a grid of images uh, from those uh, subtasks. And we're going to get to the actually showing those tasks in a second, um, if you're wondering about that. And then yes, sort of uh, display everything here. Um, but the interesting stuff is this uh, use real time runs with taxing. So this is what allows you to subscribe to um, all the runs with a certain tag. And then uh, I'm passing in the union of the types of the tasks um, that could possibly come back. So as you, if I click on that, you can see I've got the handle upload task. And if I click on this one, I've got the run run file model task. Um, so it, this gives you nice uh, type safe kind of payload and output and, uh, and everything. Uh, that you can use to to you know have nicer types. So as you can see here, we only have uh, two different types of task identifiers, and so we're only basically these images only uh, are are uh, being constructed from the runs that are on that run file model thing uh, task, um, and we're doing a little bit of uh, uh, 
basically uh, parsing of the runs metadata here. Uh, and I'm going to get to that in a second and how that works. Uh, but basically, I want to just return uh, the model uh, and the results uh, from the, uh, uh, the 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 run file model task, which will you know give us uh, status and uh, you know possibly an, an an image if it's complete. Um, so yeah, let's go over to the task and actually see what's sort of what's going on in the trigger.dev side of things. Uh, so this is our handle upload task that we sort of trigger from that upload uh, thing handler or router. Uh, and pr pretty much all it does is sort of uh, delegate to um, the run file model task with a batch trigger in wait. Uh, so it's doing three different uh, file model runs. And uh, file is sort of like a, a really cool way of like programmatically uh, running uh, interesting you know diffusion and image like models ai models in the cloud um, and so this is our our run file model task and pretty much all it does is you know call uh, file.subscribe which is the thing that sort of kicks off uh, a file model run and then we hear back uh, here with like the um, uh, as the as the model is is running in the file.ai uh, infrastructure we get back uh, some some callbacks, and then once this whole thing is finished, we actually get back to the image. And um, what I want to note uh, importantly here is we're, I, I'm not sure if you might not know what this metadata uh, thing is, but um, uh, each run uh, in a trigger.dev uh, system has uh, basically a little set of metadata that you can update. Um, and uh, that's attached to the run. So as you update the metadata, um, that will uh, update the real-time uh, system. And so you can you can use this metadata to basically, um, you know, talk to your front end from your trigger.dev tasks, like in the middle of a task. Um, so it's not just uh, not just waiting for a task to finish. Uh, you can you can update the the real-time system basically whenever you want in the middle of it. So this is what this, this metadata thing is here. So this is sort of where, you know, setting the status uh, uh, and then we're updating the, the result with the image here later on. Uh, so this is where this comes into play, um, which I was talking about earlier. So each one of these uh, runs metadata thing is basically this, uh, this data that I'm setting here which you can learn more about in, in the docs. As I understand, it might be a little bit confusing <laughs> um, from this, this demo. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's pretty much the whole, the whole system. Now, um, this use real-time runs with, with tag hook. You, you know, we have hooks for uh, subscribing to like a single run if you want to build like a bit of a simpler um, experience um, or you can build like a quite uh, complex uh, thing with a, a whole whole bunch of runs as subscribing to at the same time with the, the tag system. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about uh, releasing this feature. It is our number one request, requested feature since uh, V3 was released. So I'm uh, excited to get it out there um, and see what you guys build and you know hopefully fix any problems that come up. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's available now in, in uh, version 3.1 of the uh, SDK and the server. Um, so if you're self-hosting, you can you can use this as well. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, please uh, reach out to us on Discord or Twitter or X. Um, and uh, excited to see what you guys come up with.